Welcome to this video about decision-making calculations in queries in Microsoft Access. Now what is a decision-making calculation? All it is is the query is going to make some choice or some decision based on a formula. So you might say if this happens then do that. Most often you'll see these as if-then type statements. So Let's go to an example. For each order, list the status of the order as either paid or not paid. Label this as status and then display in the final query those fields in this order. Order number, uh, see the cash receipt number, and status. Now notice what we want the query to do is to make a decision. Has it been paid or not? So let's go ahead and open up Access. We're going to start by creating a query in Design View. Now for this one, we need to know about the order. So I'm going to go ahead and put orders in there. And then we also need to know about shipping. Now there might be a temptation to also put cash receipts in here. We're going to come back and talk about that in a little bit, but we don't need it first uh, to start this query. So the first thing we need to do is, what do we need to know? Well, we needed order number, and we needed to sort that descending. So I'll go ahead and fix that. We also need the CRNO, and then we need this variable called status. So if I run this, you can see I get 545 records. And notice the CRNO is blank sometimes, and sometimes it's not. What that means is, has the order received a cash receipt number? If not, if there's no cash paid for this order, like 545, then those are the ones we need to say, hey, these are not paid. This is going to show the ones that are paid. All right, so to do that, I'm going to go ahead and open up Builder to work on expression. Now we're told to call this status, so I'll type that in. And now the th what we need to do is this if statement. Now an if in access is going to be two eyes, so just make sure you see that. And now we need to have the expression. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up the table. And this is going to be the ship table. And if it's the CRNO, and what we want to do is is not null. All right, if it's not null, what do we want it to say? So if there's something there, we want it to say paid. Or if there it is null, we want to say not paid. Now I did is not null. You could do is null and just switch these. Yeah, that doesn't matter. It's whatever your tastes are. So if we did it right, we'll click run. Sure enough, that one's not paid. That one's paid, and it's working well. Now something to be aware of. What happens if we include this cash receipt table? All right, so just by putting it in the view, if I run this, I now only have 529. And you'll notice something under status. If I sort it, I don't have any that are not paid. So what happened? Well, if you remember back to joining, if I click on this link, you can see that I'm only including rows where the join fields from both tables are equal. So what that means is there has to be a number in cash receipts and there has to be a number in table ship. Well, remember if I delete this, the ones were not paid didn't have a cash receipt number in that table. And so by including this, I got rid of all the not paids. Now one way you could change this is you could change the row so you say, you know what, we want to keep all records from ship and only cash receipts when it's e equal. When I run that, you can see I can get that right, correct answer again. All right, so just be very careful when you are conducting your query that you think through what the joins are doing. That'll trip you up very quickly if, if you're not paying attention. Now as a reminder, the key for this lecture or this video, the new stuff, is using this if statement to, to do some logic. All right, so let's go back to another example. Number two, management is considered simplifying a few of the inventory descriptions. Create a column labeled Simplified Descript, or DESC, to indicate if the inventory descriptions for an inventory item is over 100 characters long. For items over 100 carifies, characters, simplified descript should say equal yes, and otherwise it should equal no. Display in the final query these fields in this order. Inventory number, inventory name, description, and then the simplified descript field. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new query. Now for this one, we're going to do inventory. We'll just need that one table. The things we need in there, we need to make sure we have inventory number, inventory name, inventory description. 
Just a side note, even just doing that much, you'll get at least some partial credit when we get to an exam. So you want to make sure you just follow those instructions, even if you don't know how to do everything. All right, so there it is. There's the inventory description. You can see some of these get really, really long. And so what we need to do is come in here and say, hey, I need this new field. I'm going to go to Builder, so it's easier to see. And this needs to be called Simplify Descript. And again, I'm going to use the if statement. What's my descript description? Or what's my criteria, my expression? Well, what I need it to look up is this inventory description if it's greater than 100 characters. Well, what's my function for doing that? I can look through here and try to find it by, by sorting through all the functions. I happen to know that it's going to be the length function because that returns how long, how many characters are in a string. And then I'm going to go through, open up my tables, inventory, and pop an inventory description up there. Again, I like using this navigation just because then it types it incorrect and I don't end up with any little errors. All right, so now I have the length, and I want to make sure it's greater than 100. Now, be real careful when you use equalities that you read the problem carefully so you don't do greater than or equal to. You, you make sure you get the right one. So if it's greater than 100, the problem said to label it yes. That means there's a problem. We're going to have to fix it. If not, label it no. All right, now notice this just has one. I could, in my true situation here, put another if statement if the question required it. So you can neft, nest if statements to get more than just two criteria as needed. And you'll see that in the practice problems and a few of the homework problems. All right, so I click OK. Now I run it. Well, I can't really see it, so I'm going to right click on here and change the field width because I can't click and drag it. This field's too long. So I'm going to go ahead and just change it down to 25. So you can't see everything, but simplify description. Here's the long ones, a shorter one long ones, etc. It looks like it's working great, and I've answered the question. All right, so to summarize, just if statements, you use IIF, and then you can use the, the true-false. These are going to get very powerful as we combine them with other stuff, with the aggregation functions and then subqueries. So good luck, and thanks for tuning in.